on the right you can see the CCMT valve, which you tend to call your magic valve, right? So that, that's your high pressure valve. So here we have the, the high pressure part in the red and we have the, the, the high pressure valve um, over here. This is not where the magic happens, of course, this is just a valve opening yeah. and closing. The magic happens in the controller, which, which we will have a look at a little bit later on. Hey, Trevor Matthews here from Refrigeration Mentor at the 2022 Chilventa event. This has been a great event so far. Day two, I'm at the Dan Foss booth with Patrick Clarity. How are you doing, Patrick? Great, thank you. Great to have you here. Patrick's, Welcome. Patrick's been with Dan Foss for over 20 years and he's been learning CO2 since then. He started with the electronics group, is that correct? That's correct. I've been in uh, technical support for electronics for about 20 years and now I rolled into a more strategic job, which is not that easy, but uh, yeah, we'll try. Yeah, and this is what I love about this event. You meet technical experts on CO2. And, and today we're going to dive into some of uh, Dan Foss solutions for uh, transcritical booster racks. So, Patrick, why don't you uh, talk about some of the solutions that you have for uh, your, the transcritical CO2 systems? Yeah, well, you can see some of the solutions we have over here. Uh, on the right, you can see the CCMT valve. Uh, which you tend to call your magic valve, right? So that, that's your high pressure valve. Uh, you can see it in the picture over here. So now we got the picture going. So here we have the, the high pressure part in the red and we have the, the, the high pressure valve um, over here. So this is what you would call your magic, magic valve. <laughs> in the end, this is not where the magic happens. Of course, this is just a valve opening yeah. and closing. The magic happens in the controller, which, which we will have a look at uh, a little bit later on. Yeah. So this is your CCMT high pressure. Then here we have uh, also a CCM or CCMT bypass valve, which is controlling the pressure in the receiver. Um, and both have the, the pressure uh, transducer on site. Um, we have an ejector, which you have over there. I think you've seen that um, a few times uh, already. Yeah. Um, later on, we can have a look at the big industrial injector, which yeah. is quite a bit bigger. <laughs> yeah. But um, this, uh, this is the old one that's uh, still working. And of course, here we see some other line components. So we have some pressure switches on the top. We have some check valves. We have non-return valves. We have a high pressure solenoid valve over here, which is also a new product that we released one or two years ago, a uh, high pressure solenoid which you can use, for instance, here in your oil return system okay. um, or any other any place you want to you want to have it. Um, so let's, let's talk about that high pressure valve. That high pressure valve controls the gas cooler condenser, correct? Correct. Yeah. So I've heard a lot of the times like the main the main sensor in any any system is that gas cooler outlet temperature sensor. Do you want to talk about that a little bit more? And it the is. Importance about yeah, that? we have we have two sensors running. Um, of course, we have if we if we have the gas cooler up here, then we have uh, this one is what we call the gas cooler outlet sensor. That's the one that you just mentioned, and here we have the ambient um, outside temperature, which is probably where it all starts. Okay. Uh, because um, we first we measure the ambient temperature, and we say okay, then we have let's say if this is 20 degrees outside yeah. Celsius. Yeah. Sorry about the not being able to do Fahrenheit for you. No, that's okay. Uh, so if this is 20 degrees outside ambient, then we want to have two or three degrees uh, higher gas cooler outlet. Okay. That's, let's say, that's a settable setting. Yeah. Um, but that, that's the standard. Two, three Kelvin above the ambient, this yeah. is where we want to have the gas cooler outlet. Okay. And that temperature is being controlled by the fans up here. Okay, yeah. And this gas cooler outlet, that determines the pressure inside the gas cooler. Okay. Yeah. So basically there is a table inside the controller saying if we have this gas cooler outlet temperature, then we want to run on this pressure. Yes. Because that gives the best COP um, of the system. Yeah. So that's, and that's the knowledge that we can bring in and probably we're not the only ones doing this. Yeah. There are tons of brands doing more or less the same what we do it in, let's say our way, of course. Um, so it all starts with the ambient that determines the outlet of the gas cooler and that determines in the end the pressure we have. And the pressure, that is the one being controlled by the gas cooler uh, valve here. Okay. Because in transcritical, temperature and pressure are separated. So that's why we 
control the temperature with the fans yep. and we control the pressure with the valve. Yeah. And so that's a good point because you said earlier, the valve, that high pressure valve is not really the main component. It's a controller that's the main component because yeah. it tells the valve what to do, either open and close, depending yeah. on the signal that it gets from the controller. I was told uh, many times that there's different zones inside the controller for the best COP that you just talked about. Do you want to talk about those three different zones in the controller? I think there's a transcritical one, an intermediate one, and then a subcritical zone. Is that what they're called? Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's mainly, of course, two. It's two? subcritical and transcritical. Okay. Um, subcritical, the gas cooler is behaving like any other, let's say, ordinary uh, condenser. Yeah. So that's where we have the, the discharge gas condense into a let's say normal liquid yep. and then we're just running on subcooling like any other uh, system um, yeah. if we go into the transcritical that's where temperature and pressure are detached yeah. um, and we have to run them separately so that's when we run into the let's say optimal cop control but subcritical we run on um, subcooling like any other normal system good point so that's being controlled by this controller down here We'll have a look, we can have a look later uh, yeah. on the other side. So the controller down here, which is the AKPC at a pool pack controller yeah. 782B, that's basically controlling everything, everything you see on this picture. So it's controlling the LT compressors um, with uh, the speed control, yes or no. Yeah. It's controlling the MT, the parallel compressors wow. and the whole high pressure part. So it's also controlling these two high pressure valves it can control the ejector if needed. And of course, we have the, the heat recovery also that can be controlled all from that one controller. So what I've heard from a lot of technicians that work on a lot of Danfoss, because Danfoss, hot pressure valve, the CCMT, CCTM uh, uh, valve, they're prolific in North America. But I've heard from technicians that they were using the E326A, uh, but now it's not available. You want to talk a little bit of the transition yeah. and what they need to do if they come into that? That was that. the EKC 326A, and that's quite an old controller okay. on an old hardware. But that comes from the, the time where um, the, the pack control, the compressor control, and the high pressure control were not inside yeah. one controller. So sense. we had one controller doing the compressors and the fans on the gas yeah. cooler and we had a separate small little controller doing these two valves over yeah. here and later those two were merged into yeah. one pack controller so that functionality has been in that pack controller for quite a number of years already but we kept that little secret controller alive for yeah. quite some years yeah. because still a lot of especially industrial controllers uh, uh, installers they liked it they had their own systems for doing the compressors and they had our small controller doing the high pressure parts. Yeah. And, but as we cannot keep that controller alive, because it's an old yeah. hardware, yeah, exactly. it's hard to keep up with all the, the components. Um, it was merged into the big one quite some time ago and now we decided to phase it out. Yeah. So right, there will point. not be a replacement, sorry for that. No, don't be sorry so, because- uh, it's inside the big one. This is what you need to understand as a technician out there. You need to understand the transition, the life cycle. Each controller has a life cycle. And like Patrick said, that controller had old hardware. It probably wasn't as efficient and didn't have the algorithms now that this new pack controller has. So really understanding those transition and embracing them because now you got a solution that will do a lot more and a lot more function. Yes, maybe the price is a bit more to go to get this because you're using that uh, 3268, but now you get a controller that has better controlling algorithms, more inputs, outputs, and it's really, you gotta think about it as a value add now. And that's a life cycle of a product because products can't stay alive forever when new True. technology come out. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And also this one, uh, this is our, what we call, let's say the flagship of, of yeah. our pack controls. Even this one is quite some years old. So we're moving it to a new hardware platform in one or two years, oh, but the functionality will stay the same. It's like you said, uh, there is a life cycle to each controller and there is only so many years you can supply a certain hardware, um, but the functionality will still be there just on a different different hardware. Yeah. yeah. So let's get back to the, the valve again for a second. A lot of times, you know, I've seen it when I work for a manufacturer doing electronic valves and doing training, that they're like, oh, the valve doesn't work, you know, the valve's broken, they cut them out and they send them back. And then I, there's many times I send valves back to the manufacturer and they open them up and there's nothing wrong with the valve. Yeah. Or there's a lot of dirt in the valve. 
What are some of the things that you've seen that could be prevented in the field to make your valves last longer in the field? Dirt is certainly uh, one of the issues because especially in CO2 systems, they are quite sensitive to dirt. So be careful, work in a clean way. Um, the, the problems that we see most, especially on these st stepper valves, is the wiring, uh, uh, people doing the wiring wrong. Because these valves are quite robust, they can take a beating, uh, but still there are four wires attached. Yeah. There are two wires for the coil opening the valve and two wires for closing the valve. Yeah. And if you mix some wires yeah. any which way, it, it might not open or even worse, might open in the wrong direction. Yeah. So even when, you, uh, when you're doing your commissioning and you're manually opening, closing the valve just to test it out, you can hear it moving, yep. but you're not hearing if it's moving up or it's moving down, yep. right? You just hear some movement. Yep. So you need to be absolutely sure that when you open it, it's really opening and not closing. Yeah. And that's something that happens a lot that people think, okay, I open it up manually, it's working. And then they start up the system and then it's working in completely the wrong direction. Yeah. And strangely <laughs> enough, it is doing something. Yeah. but not your system is not working very efficient. So yeah. you will see problems all over the place just because your valve is working in the wrong direction. Yeah. And so that's why during commissioning it's imperative that you make sure that when you open this one, there's a higher pressure here and then that pressure moves from here to there. So you know absolutely sure it's opening and not closing. Yeah. So that's uh, very important. And I've seen this many times with electronic valves where they were wired backwards and they were driving home, that's what I call it, they're driving to zero percent over and over and over again. If yeah. the parameters are set up wrong, the step rate's set up wrong. Have you ever seen where it strips the valve or breaks the valve because the parameters are set up wrong? It, it, that, that can happen. We have seen that in, uh, in the older valve, the, the old ETS valve, okay. which was not so much suitable for, for CO2. Okay. And if the pressures got up and, and it was uh, wired wrongly, you could destroy the valve, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. This one is a bit more robust. It yes. will not happen that quickly, yeah. but still it is, you have to be careful. Yeah. And this is one of the most important things that you need to understand is you need to have the manual. You need to read the manual and take the time to understand it. And you don't need to learn this overnight. I say this all the time in my videos, take your time to read it. Patrick read the manuals and probably helped write some of the manuals, read them hundreds and thousands of times. That's just like I did when I was, working for the manufacturer. I kept reading it to understand it. When you understand the manual, you're going to understand how the valve works properly. And when it's not functioning properly, then you can understand, well, it's probably, it might be this parameter or that parameter or, you know, different things. And I think it's highly important to read those manuals, get into them and understand the parameters and how you set them up. It's not something us guys like to do, right? Yeah. We, yeah. we try to yeah. wing it normally, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, that's, that's what it's needed. Absolutely. Okay. Especially for a controller, like this, you need some software to set it up. You need to know there are tons of parameters inside, hundreds of them. Yeah. Most of them are quite self-explanatory, uh, but there are quite a few where you have no clue if you don't read up on what this certain parameter is doing. Awesome. Absolutely. Now, why don't you take Hey, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you got something out of it, something that you can use in your daily life. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and click the bell button because when you do click the bell button, it will notify you anytime new videos are released. Also, check out the Refrigeration Mentor webpage at refrigerationmentor.com where I'll have all the different trainings, upcoming events, the different podcasts I've been on, as well as the Refrigeration Mentor podcast. If you want to check that out on Apple, Spotify, Google, any service provider of your choice. Super excited to see you at the next video. Now let's get a conversation going.